you want to go for something that has, if possible, a stainless steel blade, which just means that it'll last a bit longer in terms of getting it sharpened and the blades are not rusty and things like that. The outer sole, you want to go for something that has a nice soft outer sole, so you either want to go for something that has a dual density outsole or a TPU outsole. All of these um, will be um, on the inboxes for the um, different skates that you get, so look out for that. In terms of the materials, it would be nice to have a nice sublimated design, which means that all of these designs are built into the fabric themselves, so the um, skates that you have will last and they will look warm and padded just after a little bit of using them, which is also something you might want to mention. But in terms of the core package, you want something that's nice and soft and forgiving. So when you're learning out how to do the different um, things on the ice, the stops, the turns, and you have to be able to lean and put pressure on the boot, you want something that's going to be a bit more forgiving with you learning how to do that, so a nice soft structure in the skate. So in terms of what to look out for, if you're an intermediate skater, somebody that's trying to get into rec level hockey, that sort of thing, you're going to want to go for a slightly stiffer skate, something that will offer you a bit of support and protection in terms of getting hit by sticks and pucks. And what you want to look out for, again, you want to stay in the steel. I definitely recommend going for an LS2 holder because they're just a lot more in profile for hockey being able to do all the different leans and turns and things like that. In terms of the outer sole, I'd definitely be looking for something that's either dual density, a fairly rigid and light, or a um, full composite outsole, which can be found on some entry level to um, intermediate level skates. As we said, with the structure, you want something that's fairly dense that will offer you a bit of support and protection while you're on the ice. In terms of the um, tongue of the skate, I definitely recommend, at an absolute minimum, you'd want to have like these ones over here, extra foams that are padded over there that you can see there, in this midsection over here, to prevent lace bite. You definitely want some extra foams. You don't want to go for something that's completely flat and thin there, because then you'll start to get that lace bite, which is definitely not what you want when you're learning how to play hockey. I'd also definitely go for a skate that offers some sort of um, a thermal moulding property, something that will take to the shape of your foot after you've used it. If it's just a case of using the skate until it shapes to the sh shape of your foot, that's fine. Or if you can find a skate at a decent price point and also at a decent level that can be skate baked, that's also helpful. But remember that these features aren't necessary. Skate baking isn't a necessity, it's just a shortcut in terms of getting the skates to um, fit right and also maybe perhaps get rid of some sore spots um, a bit quicker than just using it generally. But those are the points that I'd keep in mind if you're after your intermediate pair of skates. And also another point about skates, it'd probably be very beneficial for your um, rec level hockey players and also your um, uh, maybe extreme or freestyle ice skaters that want a pair of boots that will last quite a while. In terms of the blade, which is something that's not really considered that much, if you're going for the Bauer um, X range, which is new X 1.0, 2.0, that kind of range, you want to make sure that the blade can be changed because if you're going to be hammering away at the blade, getting it sharpened a lot, doing crazy tricks, or if you're going to be playing a lot of hockey and the blade's going to be getting worn, you want to get something that's um, going to have an interchangeable blade. The X 1.0s to the 4.0s don't have interchangeable blades, so once the blade is worn, it's worn. But with the X 5.0s, the way the blade's positioned, you can actually remove the blade and have another one fitted. So that's definitely something that you want to keep in mind. So maybe look out for a skate that has interchangeable blades, or you might have to look at having the whole holder replaced, which can be quite costly, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. So now if you're at the top end of the intermediate section, serious rec level players that are looking to take it to the next level, or freestyle and extreme ice skaters that really give their skates a good pounding. You're going to want to go for some skates that offer you great support as well as great protection. I'd want to go for a skate that has a very anatomical fit, so it takes to the shape of your foot very well, that has nice dense materials on the outside, so it's going to last. And if you're a hockey player, you don't want to have a skate that's going to get cut and it's going to start to wear into the fibers of the skate, break it down a bit early. So getting a nice dense or scratch resistant or um, cut resistant surface on the outside is definitely handy like in these 5.0s over here. You also want something that's going to offer you extra foams for comfort and again for protection and support. In terms of the holder, you definitely want to go for a high performance holder like the LS2, which is the ones that are featured on these skates over here. Very well designed, optimising all of your skills on the ice, which is important. In terms of the blade, you definitely want to go for a stainless steel, where possible, LS2. If you prefer another brand, that's fine, but stainless steel is definitely something that you want to have as a minimum. The holder, also the, the outsole will be the next bit over here. You want that to definitely be a full composite outsole, something that offers a very high level of rigidity and excellent energy transfer, but most importantly, is nice and lightweight. In terms of the tongue itself, again, you probably want to go for a very anatomical tongue, giving you that custom profile fit that everyone likes, nice and comfortable. And in terms of having the extra foams there, you want to do away with that and have a proper lace bite bar. Some of the other skates also offer good tongues that have um, that give you a bit of energy return on your forward strides and also look out for tongues that give you full mobility of your strides, which is definitely something you want to look out for. Something that allows you to flex and bend your feet, lean forward, you know, to get those quick explosive starts in. Definitely something that is, is a given for this level of skates. And also the blade, which is another point I wanted to touch on. If you're going to be getting a high 
um, level, intermediate skate to an advanced level skater, you want to get the sort of skate blades that can be changed. That's an absolute given. Your blades are going to get hammered, you want to be able to change them very easily, which is definitely something that I'm worth mentioning. Another point is also the um, tendon guard at the back here. You want something that offers you good support, not something weak and um, that leans forward, that can snap off easily. You want something nice and stiff like these ones over here, which again is important to mention. Front of the skates, toe cap, you want something nice, close fitting, anatomical, which is always um, definitely good to have in, in terms of a, a skate. Also, one of the other features the intermediates to advanced double skaters want to look out for is um, the sort of liners that the skate has. What, what kind of a liner does it have? Does it have an antimicrobial, which um, helps you to fight some of the um, bacteria buildup, or a hydrophobic liner, which helps to wick away some of the moisture? Keeping in mind these two liners only work on a very temporary basis. I wouldn't really recommend them, but if you want something that's going to be good with moisture management, go for a skate that has the perforations or the holes at the base of the skate. So that means that any water or moisture that enters the skate or builds up during games and skating sessions, it will just be filtered out and come out through those perforations or holes at the base of the skate. All the links will be in the video description just below, and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care till next time.